So, uh, good morning. I am today going to spend a little time in real time. This is actually uh, the 29th of September and I'm going to go ahead and share with you the status of the boat right now because I made some promises, not really promises, but I did say that I was planning on sailing to Mexico this fall. And unfortunately, I just have too many things yet to finish on MIG to get that done. So I am getting close. Um, but some of the things that I have left are gonna be a little uh, time consuming. So what I'm gonna do today for today's video for this week is I'm going to walk you through all the things that I have left to do before I can sail uh, around the world. All right, the other thing is for those of you who've asked, I've had a few people ask for a tour of MIG. I'm really not ready to give you a full tour of MIG because I would like to do that when it's all finished, but I'm gonna give you a preliminary tour today as I go through all of the things that still need to be done. Um, so I'm just gonna walk from the, from the, well, I'm gonna sit from the front of the boat, aft, stern, the back of the boat, the end of the boat. For those of you who don't know all those terms, it's hard for me to not use uh, boat terms to describe boat things, but I'm trying for some of you who have, who have expressed a uh, desire for me to not only tell you what those are, but maybe educate you on, on some of those terms. So uh, bear with me if you're a salty sailor and you, you don't like me explaining every little thing. Oh well, get over it. Anyway, um, so MIG, up here in the, the V-berth, uh, which is no longer V-berth, I'm pretty much finished with all of this. Uh, I have recently finished reinstalling the Samson post and the, the Samson post is a big post in the front that you tie the boat off to and you can tow the boat with it and you use it for tying off anchor uh, lines, etc and dock lines. Um, that's all bolted down again and the bow pulpit that goes around the, the bow sprit out front that keeps you from falling off the bow pulpit if you go up there is all back installed and so I have nothing left that I know of up here. So this is what used to be the V-berth. Now it is a sail locker. Um, this still comes down, still folds down just so I can access it easier but I've basically made it into this. My mom gave me this really cool uh, green moose blanket, which right now is covering the foam because I sit on it all the time. But that's one of the big projects that's left to do on MIG is actually uh, to cover all these cushions. And I've got all the materials from Sailrite and a Sailrite sewing machine to do all of that. But that's gonna take me probably a month. Um, so all the foam's cut out and I just need to finish those. But I'm gonna wait until it's cold outside because that's an indoor job. Panning over here to the nav station. At the nav station, again, everything's pretty much finished and it's all installed and has electric to it, but I still need to install a GPS uh, so I can get a fix for my AIS uh, my Vesper AIS and also I need another GPS that I install for the VHF radio. Um, those two things I basically I'm gonna wire them but I'm gonna keep the antennas inside until I'm ready to leave so once the mast is up then I can install those because they're gonna go on the shrouds on a, a piece that goes across that'll have the nav lights. Um, so that's basically all that needs to be done. Oh and this is the uh, single sideband radio, uh, which is basically a ham radio that you can use on boats on marine bands. Um, so it's, re it's, it's there, it's installed, but it still needs the antenna run, and then it will, it will work. But obviously I can't do that till the mast is up because the antenna goes off the backstay. Um, then the other thing that needs to happen is this compression post that's under the mast has the wires in it 
for everything that go to the mast and I still need to run new wires for that which again I can't really complete that until the mast is up so but I'm gonna run all the wires and have them in this little compartment right here so that I can put them on when the time comes the next thing that still needs to be done is my nav lights so I still need to install all of my running lights my port and starboard and stern light uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that even though they'll go up on the mast too but I'm gonna cover them up with a bag and put them out on the deck uh, I can install the wires for the spreader lights but I can't actually install them until the mast is ready to go up I can also run the wires for the tricolor anchor light except at this point um, I don't want to put this on and have it out there until uh, March so in the weather so I'm gonna leave it to install until I'm ready to put the mast up so there are a few things here that are just kind of a weight thing um, but I can wire the mast and that is something I need to do and I'll show you that uh, LPG this is a whole new LPG system for the propane for the stove it's all done except I need to wire it up so it has power on the stern uh, pulpit and I also need to install my two uh, propane tanks one on each side back there so that needs to be done um, in the head everything is finished for the head itself a head is a toilet on a bathroom um, and I've turned this into my tool area or it almost looks like a workshop in here and there will be a net that goes across here to hold all that in maybe even more than a net maybe more like a lee cloth um, oh that's another thing I still need to install my lee cloth right here for my offshore berth and one other thing I'm doing I've decided I'm going to build a piece that fits in here and can be stored in the sail locker and a cushion that fits it so that when I'm not offshore I can turn this into a bigger berth I think that'll be nice it'll all pop off of there and store up there out of the way uh, the reason I can't use the table is the table is oversized once the tables back on here my daughter is painting a mural on the bottom of that table once that's done the table comes down but it's too big it's it's made for a table not a insert so uh, I can't use it as the insert in case anybody was wondering but I think that'll be a nice addition that's another thing I'm gonna do this fall the water maker uh, the water maker, by the way, for those of you that don't know, a water maker is a reverse osmosis with a high pressure pump that takes seawater and turns it into fresh water. And this one does it very slowly, a gallon and a half per hour. It is the exact one that I used on Wandering Dolphin, and I rebuilt it. And there will be a video of that, of me t showing you that. And the thing that's left is for me to plumb it. I do have the through hole fitting right here. And I've been putting together all of the parts. Thank you, Jesse, for donating uh, the filters. I have now have the two pre-filters. This is the raw water filter that will go there. I got it at a at a flea market as well for about a third of the price of a new one. So that all needs to be plumbed. Uh, again, something I can do in the winter time when I it's cold outside, but I can turn on the heater and the electric heater in here. And I can do that later uh, by the way look at this tell me if you like this idea oh it's a little bit hard to get the reach but this is my tool storage area it used to be that all of that was all of that was in toolboxes and stuff that was stored under the uh, in the cabinets underneath the settee and I uh, Norsi 27s they are short on storage space that's the one big thing that is needed and I need that area for food etc so I've moved all my tools here and one of the ex uh, wonderful changes that that made is now they are very accessible to me anytime I need them 
uh, they're very easy to find. I don't have to pull cushions out and open up uh, cupboards and find the box that has that tool. And inevitably, the one that you need is on the very bottom. And so you end up having to pull everything out every single time you need a tool. And so this way, I will no longer have to do that. And I'm very happy with that. The next thing that needs to be done is uh, right here. This is the engine compartment. It's right underneath the companionway. And it now holds all my batteries for my 48 volt system. And they are all up and running. Everything works. Uh, the engine works. It's just not bolted down and uh, attached with the Sigma drive to the prop shaft yet. The other thing that isn't done are the solar, uh, the solar chargers, one for the 12 volt over there and one for the 48 volt over here. Uh, those need to be wired up. Obviously, I can't do that till I get the solar. So the next, uh, one of the big things is just bolting down the engine or motor. The other thing I need to do is this is the former fuel tank and it is uh, now a storage area and I have gone back and forth with what I want to do with that because I know that water is going to get down in there so what I'm going to do I will show you by going back here so this is the cockpit now we're in the cockpit this is why you kind of get a little bit of a tour of MIG and this is the aft cabin, which you sure don't want to get too fat or you ain't going to go in here. And I've been losing weight, by the way. So uh, back to what I was talking about. What I'm going to do is make another compartment top right here on the fuel tank uh, in this area so that I can access this end of it and then the part of the reason I'm doing that is I have changed sorry about that that's probably really loud this is my new uh, packing gland and it is not a dripless seal it's a flax packing and water leaks a little bit out of that by design so I am putting another bilge pump in here, but it's gonna actually be down in the fuel tank on this end down here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill two holes right here that go into the tank. And one of those is gonna be attached to a bilge pump. And the other one will have a tube that drains through to the regular bilge. And then I'm going to fill the bottom of that fuel tank with lava rock, only about maybe two inches high, so that I have a platform that water can leak through without it to the main bilge without getting anything wet that's in there. And then I'm going to use that for storage for probably extra water. I did take out the water bladder that was in there. Um, I'm going to actually store that somewhere else. But um, anyway, yeah, so that's the plan with the fuel tank. And I'll have a new compartment area here that I can access uh, this end of it. So that's what has to happen down here. The other thing I need to do is finish carpeting these walls with this new carpet. It was self-adhesive, but obviously the adhesive that came with it isn't going to cut it so i need to use the spray adhesive and glue that down nice and finish this area um so the way the way this works is you've got a berth that goes right back here and then you've got one on this side that goes back here and this side we use the starboard side we use as storage for uh different stuff whatever we need um so that still needs to be done and I haven't even cut the cushions out for back here. I've got the foam. I still need to cut the cushions out and then um, that's basically all that needs to happen back here except for some 
Uh, varnishing, I need to sand and varnish. I'm not going to do the wood back here. Uh, if, if John wants to do that, he can. Um, so yeah, so the, it has a little compartment here for storing some stuff. And then it has one here that you can store things in. So and that's all the storage back here for whoever is using this as their, uh, as their, their cabin. So let's go down the boat now. And oh, we wanted to finish a tour. All right, so let's go forward and we will. The decks are dirty because I haven't finished everything. So here's the manual windlass that brings a chain up and it's all installed. And the new bowsprit is installed, and the new bow pulpit, or old bow pulpit, is reinstalled. And it's all up and running. Um, all my canvas is finished. I've re sewn it all, re stitched it all. And let's see here other big jobs. Cushions is probably the biggest job that needs to still be. Yeah. Finish. So on the mast, I have repainted the mast and the boom. They look really nice. Um, but I need to run the wires for them. Here's the wires for this one's for the antenna. It's very good VHF antenna cable. Oh, this one is, sorry. This one is for the radar which is in that box, my Furuno Watchmate radar. And then I've got new uh, wire to run up for all of the lights. Uh, and then that'll be finished. So here's my two solar panels that will be installed for the 12 volt system back on the rails. That needs to happen. And I still need to order the uh, mounting hardware for for the big solar panels for the 48 volt system. I need to order them and the panels and install them. And I'm again, not doing that actually until it's in the water because they're gonna be too tall for me to use, take it on the road on the trailer um, with it up. So that's gotta wait until I'm, I put the boat in the water. So I've got a few things that just have to wait till the boat is in the water. So what am I gonna do through the through the rest of the winter. Well, I've got all of the uh, rigging to redo as well. This is the standing rigging. Standing rigging is the wires that hold the mast up. And I like that it, this is all Norseman fittings, which I really like, but I have decided that I am going to go synthetic rigging for everything. And I, instead of having a split backstay I'm going to do two backstays, one on each side that go all the way to the top of the mast. And I'm also going to turn this into a Solent rig. Um, I'm not going to go cutter. A Solent has both sails farther forward and they're closer together. A cutter has the second sail, uh, head sail farther back. And I've decided that I'm going to uh, actually mount the head stay off of the very tip of the bowsprit. So I need to install a couple of fittings right here. Let's see if I can get my finger in there, right here on each side to attach the stay that goes on each side to the end of the bowsprit. And then I need to attach one that comes down to here. So there'll be three holding it there and then the head stay will go from there. And then the, the second stay on the Solent will attach where the head stay used to be. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to, on the mast, I'm going to actually install a, another one of these. Uh, this is for, this is a boom bale. It's for attaching the main sheet um, to the end of the boom. And I'm going to install one of those right here, I'll measure down exactly the right distance 
uh, between the two so that they're even and I'll mount it here and I'll bolt it through the mast all the way through and then I will attach my uh, inner forestay to that. The nice thing about that is it's far enough up here that I don't actually have to have running back stays to support the back side of the mast when I'm running my Solent sail. Um, so that's, that's a lot of stuff that still needs to happen. Uh, so the rigging, the reason I'm, uh, the rigging's gonna not need to be finished until I put the boat into the water. So that means I can start doing the splicing on the synthetic rigging myself over the winter time and I can buy one piece of it at a time and splice it up so when it comes time in March for me to put the boat in the water and raise the mast I will have all those stays finished and also they're expensive the the uh, rigging for it is expensive the Dyneema etc is very expensive so those things um, are gonna keep me busy. So what is the plan now? Well, the plan was to put the boat in the water in October, which is in a couple of days. That's not gonna happen. Now you can see why. And then it was to sail the boat south and join the Baja Ha Ha and go down to Mexico and spend the winter in Mexico. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. So my next second plan, which has always been my original plan actually, is to, instead of going to Mexico, I will put the boat in the water in March and I will sail to Hawaii as soon as it's ready to go. And then from Hawaii, I'll sail to Fiji and then on across the Pacific the rest of the way. So, so that's now the, the new and improved MIG plan. Uh, the other thing is I want everybody to know I've been on keto thanks to my brother Caleb Thank you very much by the way, bro um, I've been on keto for almost a month now, and I've lost 27 pounds in a month, and I feel renewed. I don't have soreness in all my muscles And I hope I'm not making anybody upset that isn't into Oh, don't, I, this isn't a diet channel. I'm just saying it because I'm excited. I'm excited about losing this weight and feeling younger and may, maybe even in my face. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I look a little thinner. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm pumped that by spring, I'll be back to fighting sailing weight, man. I'll be able to like hold my own against all those young pups, uh, my kids. That's what I mean by young pups. Uh, now nah, I won't be able to hold my own with those guys, but uh, at least maybe I can keep up with them. That'd be something. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching again this week. Sorry there isn't more. Next week I'm gonna show us taking the engine out when we did that. That was a big deal when we took our diesel engine out of the boat. And so that's, that's next week. And uh, then I've got video, I've got a video on repairing a a blister on the rudder that I did. Uh, I've got the engine installation, but I'm going to do that when it's finished. Um, yeah, I've got all the mass stuff. I've got the water maker. I've got uh, other videos coming out. Um, but I'm going to occasionally do one of these as well to let you guys know where I'm at real time right now. So thanks a lot for coming along, and I hope you have a, a great fall. <laughs>